to my YouTube channel. My name is Hope and I am a photographer serving both Charleston and Savannah. And this YouTube channel is where I share a little bit of a peek into my life living in the low country as well as education for photographers and business owners. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about some updated thoughts on the Canon R6 versus the Mark III. If you have been watching my videos for any amount of time. I've posted a couple videos about the R6. Um, I think I posted like a first impressions and a couple different thoughts on it, but I've gotten lots of DMs requesting some updated thoughts. And for a while I had the R6, but wasn't really using it because I just didn't feel like I had the time to teach myself a new camera and a new editing workflow because there was just a lot of stuff happening at one time. But in the last three months, I have gone from completely using my Mark III 100% of the time to never taking it out of my bag. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about some of the updated changes I've seen with the camera, some things I've changed about my workflow to be able to use the R6 consistently and all that good stuff. But before we dive in too deep, I have a free gift for you down in the description and it is my senior gear checklist. So if you are a senior photographer and you wanna see a complete checklist of everything that I have in my bag for senior sessions with links to all the things, then go ahead and download that below. It's completely free. It's just a thank you for tuning in and watching my channel. I'm so happy that you're here and grateful to have you. But let's talk technical stuff now. Um, before I dive in any further, I just wanna add a quick disclaimer that I am not a tech guru and I never want to be a tech guru. I am a very non-technical person. So the things I'm going to talk about today boil pretty much down to only personal preference. Um, I am just very particular about like my workflows and like what I'm doing with my hands while I'm shooting. And that's what we're going to talk about today because the biggest learning curve for me switching from the Mark III to the R6 was that I was trying to use some of the new focus features and it was just really slowing me down while I was shooting because I felt like my hands after 10 years of shooting were just so used to clicking certain buttons in certain places that having to retrain myself was taking too much time. And one of the things that I am known for with my clients and that I love about my shooting style is that I shoot very, very quickly. And so to feel like it was slowing me down and causing me to laugh at sessions was just not working for me. So that's what kind of what we're going to talk about today. So please don't comment and tell me all of the technical things I say that are wrong because I'm not a very technical person and this really does just boil down to a personal preference. But I want to talk about three things, three big things that I noticed were the biggest changes that I experienced when going from the Mark III to the R6 and kind of how I've adjusted my workflow to compensate for those things. So the first thing I want to talk about is focus mode, which I touched on just a little bit because the R6 has so much more advanced capability with focus than the Mark III does. Um, I actually am at the point now where I feel like all of my lenses feel brand new to me because I, for the longest time, have had issues with my Canon 50 millimeter 1.2 missing focus or being soft focus. But when I put it on the R6, I have no issues with it at all. Like I am shooting probably 200 less images per portrait session because I know that I can rely on them to be sharp and in focus, like tack sharp and in focus with the R6 body, which I love. But I was, like I mentioned earlier, having trouble with the workflow and the literal like buttons and movements of my hands with some of the touch to focus and like tap to focus features that the R6 has. So what I did is I played with a lot of different focus modes to get to the point that I felt like it was very similar to the Mark III in the way that my hands were moving and the buttons that I was clicking. So. I have actually now turned off the tap to focus and I loved that feature initially, but to me, it just doesn't feel practical to be tapping to focus for an entire shoot or an entire wedding day. That might work for you. It just wasn't my favorite. So I have turned that completely off and I switched to the one point or I think it's, they call it the AF. Let me look. So they have a face tracking option and then they also have a one point AF or a spot AF option. And then there's also the expand areas. There's like larger zones, things like that. I go to spot AF or one point AF um, and manually select the exact focal point that I want to shoot when I'm at portrait sessions because the face tracking to me, while it's very accurate, it didn't feel super customizable to me. And with the Mark III, I was so used to using this toggle 
struggled to toggle the point that I wanted while I was shooting, that going from doing this with my thumb while shooting to trying to drag or tap to focus was just slowing me down majorly. So now I use that one focal point and I am manually selecting where I want it to focus by using the same toggle on the R6. That has sped it up so much for me. It's allowed me to feel like the focus is really accurate and I'm a control freak and it makes me feel like I'm in complete control of exactly where I am focusing. So that was one of the biggest changes that I made. I turned off tap to focus. I use that one spot AF so that I can pick exactly where I want to nail down focus. So the second thing is a very specific and nuanced thing that I have noticed. And I've actually been playing with it at my last few most recent sessions. So this might be something I change in a future updated R6 video. But on the Mark III, I always used the portrait color profile. So there's a ton of different options for color profiles, but I always used the portrait one because I always felt like it lent its hand to my really vibrant, colorful style. But when I was using the portrait color profile on the R6, I felt like the images looked a little bit gray and a little bit too muddy for my style when I was going to edit them later. So I switched from the portrait color profile or picture profile to the automatic one on the R6. And I have noticed that they seem a lot more consistent to edit like my Mark III images. So I'm now able to apply very similar edits to the R6 images that I did to the Mark III images and have a lot few a lot fewer tweaks to make in Lightroom um, because I've changed to that auto color profile. So that's a very nuanced and specific thing that I noticed just because I'm so familiar with my style after shooting for 10 years that I was noticing just slight changes in the raw files that I really didn't like when I was trying to use that same color profile on the R6. So I've switched it to auto. And the last thing is the difference in the raw files in post-processing. So there's actually a full video in my senior photography membership, The Senior Scoop, where I dive specifically into the editing comparisons. But I do think that the R6 images are a little bit flatter and a little bit more gray toned almost than the Mark III images. And again, I mentioned this earlier, but my very like bright and vibrant shooting style needs to have really vibrant colors in order to be consistent with the signature images that I'm known for. So I do find myself increasing the vibrancy and post-processing of the R6 images compared to the Mark III images. Not majorly, like if I'm doing plus 45 for a Mark III image with my vibrancy, I might be doing plus 55 for an R6 image. So not a drastic, drastic change, but enough to be noteworthy because I do feel like in order to have those rich colors, I'm having to compensate a little bit more in the editing room and Lightroom. So those are the three biggest changes that I've noticed, but I am just absolutely loving this R6. I also love that I have the control ring adapter. I talked about this in my initial R6 video. I'll link that below, but it allows me to adjust my settings with that control ring. So I've played with ISO. I've played with using that for shutter speed. I think I've landed on using it for ISO, um, but I am just really loving this camera. It does incredible things for my senior work. Um, I'll include a few images here for you guys to see. but I am just truly loving the R6. I'm almost at the point where I might sell the Mark III and get a second R6 as my backup camera because that's how much I am loving it. So. Hope this was helpful to kind of hear some updated thoughts. Again, there's that free gift with my senior gear checklist in the description. If you would like to get your hands on a full list of all of my gear, comment below what other questions you have about the R6 versus the Mark III, and I'd be happy to answer them in a future video. But I hope you guys are having a wonderful week, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.